Welcome to Morning Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Hey, good morning, Morning Devotion crowd. Morning devotees, it's good to see you this Monday morning. What a week. What a great week, I believe. God has in store for us. So it's so good to see each of you. Autumn, Diana, Lynn, Teresa, thank you. Thank you for making this a part of your morning and just part of your life and what's happening this week. I just believe, I believe we're moving into a season of restoration. That's what the Lord just laid on my heart early this morning. Just been walking the floors, pacing the floors, saying it's time to get it all back. Yes, your season, your time of restoring, of restoration, that's what I'm believing. Ron, Thelma, thank you for being a part. Get the word out, like, share, subscribe, follow. We've been doing this, we've been doing this, oh my, late, what was it, late summer 2019, uh, that we began doing these morning devotions, started 21 days, just to give you a little background, started 21 days of 21 days of prayer and fasting. By the way, we'll do that again this August and uh, looking forward to that, gonna be using Brother Josh Herring's book uh, during that season. If you don't have a copy of it, get it. I'll share more about it with you later. But we're gonna be moving into that season, but that's how it all started. Then intermittently through the rest of 2019, and then somewhere at the beginning of 2020, just felt impressed, commanded by the Lord, let's get this going and let's keep it going until the Lord exhausts that brook of Kidron and that season of renewal. But I have felt impressed this morning. Edna, this is your time to get it all back. Ronald, this is your season of restoration. And this is what the Holy Ghost just keeps telling me is it is time to get it all back. Yes. I read a story a few years back about a man in Frankfurt, Germany. He was in his mid fifties and um, couldn't find his car. Parked it, go to work, couldn't find it when he got, got off of work. So he reported it missing in 1997. What was that? What is that? 25 years ago, something like that. And uh, he had parked it in a lot outside of an industrial building, went to reclaim it, couldn't find it, reported it stolen to the police. And for 20 years, it was gone until the building was to be demolished. And they found a deserted vehicle in the yard and they reported it to the police. And after checking through old records, Police had finally located, finally located in a 20-year-old report, that car. It was the man's car, right where he had left it. Oh, oh, oh. He and his daughter went to reclaim the car. By the way, it didn't start. Didn't start. Yeah, they had to haul it off. Yes. Have you ever lost something? Maybe just misplaced it. Didn't know what happened to it. To this day, you just wonder where it's gone I mean, where does it go? I um, Or worse yet, have you ever had something stolen from you? Something precious, something valuable, a prized possession, maybe, maybe a treasure, an heirloom, something maybe with no intrinsic value except sentimental value, a prized possession. Maybe you had your wallet, your purse, your computer, something stolen from you. Maybe it was, maybe it was something like a relationship a friendship stolen from you, or worse yet, your name was slandered, your reputation. Maybe, you, maybe you've maybe you walked with this for 20 years. You reported it stolen, and for 20 years, you've waited on word. Well, here's the word, and it's Acts 3.21. There's a promise made. The chapter after the New Testament church was born was made to God's people, that at the end of times, there's going to be a restitution, or as modern translations say, a restoration of all things, a season 
of restoration. It's time to get it all back. When what was taken from you, what was stolen from you, is put back into your possession. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. I've just felt that. You see, if you go back to the early prophets, they foresaw the captivity in Babylon. They saw the ripping apart of God's people, Israel, Judah. They saw the crushing weight of oppression. They saw the precious things taken from the temple. They saw the brightest minds, the brightest young people, the promise and hope of tomorrow carried captive. They experienced a loss of prosperity. They, they experienced huge setbacks. Their sense of happiness, that sense of normalcy. Oh, Bonnie, Roy, that sense of normalcy, gone. They saw it all. They experienced that sense that just something has gone missing. I have a friend of mine and I, I, this one, this one's rough. I have a friend of mine. He's a man I greatly admire. Um, his mental capacities are slipping. That dreaded form of dementia, Alzheimer's set in. It's largely taken his personality. It's taken his ability to remember and recall. Yes. It's a curious phenomena, though. You notice, um, don't really understand how some parts of the brain can continue to function and recall. My wife's uncle led the singing for many, many years at our church. And when he could remember hardly nothing, he still remembered all those songs, those five verse songs, could still remember the songs. My mom-in-law, Tennille, showed that video clip yesterday, just a few months before her passing, that um, she had long forgotten our names and who we were and but she could still sing the songs of Zion. Yeah. Well, my friend, he, he has the unction and the anointing to preach and the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, but his mental faculties, his cognitive reason has been taken from him. Yeah. I, I, if he speaks, maybe a few sentences could make sense, but it wouldn't be cohesive, concise but the desires there so periodically, periodically. In church where he pastors, they will invite select people to come and they will let him preach. Yeah, but one day, one day, my friend is gonna have his mind back. It's gonna be restored. There is a season of restoration coming. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just, just thinking about it this morning. In fact, if I had to pick a synonym for sin, it wouldn't be probably what you think. My synonym for sin would be loss, loss. Adam and Eve lost their innocence. They lost the garden. They lost paradise. They lost their son, Abel. They lost their other son, Cain, who was marked as a wanderer on the earth. Loss. The sense that something is missing. You can't help but read Luke 15. You see that same experience again and again. A shepherd lost one of his hundred sheep. The woman lost one of the ten dowry coins. The father lost one of his two sons. Loss. It's a story of life, Diana. Kirk, Carrie, it's a story of life. It's a story of life under the sun on this sinful planet that we're on. I know some things we can afford to lose. They're not precious to us. They're just stuff. They're just stuff. They're not treasures, but other things, other things. Other things have a value that we sense their loss. We know when something valuable is missing. Samuel Clemens, or we know him as Mark Twain, he mourned the loss of his wife, Olivia. He called her Livy. He mourned her loss in 1904, and she was buried in the town, Elmira, where 
New York, where she was born. They've been through so much together, through some lean times. She edited his early books. Eventually, some best-selling books brought some financial relief. Olivia was a believer. Um, She had faith. She went to a congregational church pastored by Thomas Beecher, who was the brother of Henry Ward Beecher, the most famous man in America, Lincoln said. He was the brother of Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. She was a faithful churchgoer, had faith in God, a devout, simple faith in God. She prayed every day. She read her Bible every day. She encouraged her husband, Mark Twain, to do the same, but he resisted. He he had not a love-hate. He had a hate-hate relationship with religion. He was a famous agnostic. And through the years, he grew more calloused and he grew more caustic toward faith. You know the saying, the same sun that melts the wax hardens the clay. People can go through different, people totally different, can go through the same trials and they come away with totally different results. Some kinder, some leaning on the Lord, some more bitter and caustic. Mark and Olivia went through a lot of trials, severe financial setbacks. And they lost their only son, Langdon, who had been born prematurely, lived a year and a half. Then they lost two of their three daughters, Susan and Jean, who died as young women. It was during one of those difficult seasons of loss. Remember, sin is the synonym with loss. Yeah. It was during one of those difficult seasons. Mark Twain told his wife, Olivia, Livy, if it comforts you, why don't you lean on your Christian faith? She said, I can't. I don't have faith any longer. His prolonged questioning, his hassling harassment of her, his continued association with atheists and the so-called heady and high-minded thinkers of the world. Yes, he had so belittled her faith that when she needed it, she couldn't lay hold on it. It was stripped from her. Mark Twain, until the day he died, and was laid to rest beside Olivia in the Woodlawn Cemetery there in Elmira, New York. He felt responsible, some would say haunted, by the fact that he had caused his wife to lose her faith in God. Folks, something has gone missing. In this sinful world, something has gone missing. There's a thief out there who wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he's trying to take something precious from each and every one of you. Edna, Tammy, Catherine, Don, I don't know what it is. I don't need to know what it is. What the enemy has taken from you, from your marriage, from your family. It can be something tangible. It can be something intangible. But you feel it's lost, don't you? You sense it. You sense it. Something is missing. I say all of that to get to this point. When I use the word like restoration, it means something to us, folks. It means that what we have lost, we're going to get it back. This is the idea of the early prophets who foresaw Israel's exile into Babylon. They said there's coming a time, people of God, when you're going to be restored to a place of prosperity and happiness. A time is going to be ushered in by Messiah. When Christ comes, he said He said during his time, this time of restoration was not material, but it was. he, he defined it as the kingdom of heaven. It's a time of peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It was on the eve of his ascension, the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, wilt thou? at this time, restore. Is this the time you're going to restore? He said, no, not now. Not meat, drink. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But there's coming a time 
Israel, you're going to be restored. God's people, you're going to have that restoration coming. There is a season and a moment of restoration when God's going to give it all back. And this is what I felt in the Holy Ghost this morning. Shelly felt it in the Holy Ghost that we are entering into a season of restoration. The prophet Joel spoke of that restoration. He begins the first chapter and describes the desolation. He described the plague of locusts that had infiltrated the land. But then he said, first it was, it was a palmer worm ate up the produce. Then second, the locust, the caterpillar. Most common Terry say this is three stages of the pest, the egg, the larvae form, the full grown form. Yes. I don't know what has taken something from you. I don't know what has sidetracked and detoured something in your life. But listen to the promise of the prophet Joel. I will restore to you the years the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, that great army that I sent amongst you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass. Oh yes, right on the heels of this. It shall come to pass afterward. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You see, we are living in a day of restoration, that the things that have been taken from you are going to be restored and going to be given back. I feel like I'm speaking to somebody. I'm just saying, Colleen, what's been taken from your family? Annie, what's been taken from your family? God's going to give it back. Maybe there's somebody listening to this today or, or will be listening to this today. During this season we've lived in, this season, you've lost so much. You've lost so much, you feel like you can't regain it. Remember, sin is a synonym with loss. In this old sinful world, we're losing things and maybe something precious has been taken from your church your church family. Maybe during this season, there's just been so many marked losses that you don't know what to do. I believe that God is doing a work of restoration and he's gonna give you back what the thief has taken from you. He's robbed you. He assaulted you in the robbery. He didn't just take it. He, he, he beat you up. He knocked you over the head. He hurt you. He wounded you. He took it from you. Yes. I, I don't believe people just simply turn from the truth because of just simple curiosity or hatred. I believe many times people walk away from their faith because of loss, overwhelming loss, that the enemy and life have stripped from them. There's a thief out there who's stolen your loved ones. There's a thief out there surreptitiously breaking up families, destroying relationships. That one who steals, kills, and destroys. But you remember what the Lord said? Do you remember what he said? He said, I've come to destroy the works of the destroyer. Yes. As far back as the original sin, the original loss of paradise and innocence, it was prophesied that the seed of woman would bruise the head of the serpent, would crush the head of the serpent. Yes, that happened, of course, at Calvary. But Paul said to the church, what a prophecy. The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The NIV says the God of peace will soon crush Satan, the adversary, the slanderer, the thief under your feet. The word crush in the Greek, it means to shatter, to break into pieces. Same word was used by Luke to describe a boy that was under control of the enemy. And that boy was released by the power of the Lord to this church, to each of you. 
Trenton, Gabrielle, to you is given the power to tread on serpents, the crushing power. You've got the crushing power. And get this. It was the command of God to the church to occupy till he comes back, to not sit idly by, but to occupy. Lay hold, believe for restoration, that this is your day of restoration. It's time to get your prayer back, your worship back, your children back, your relatives back, your friends and acquaintances back, your health back, your emotional health, your spiritual health, your physical your health, your financial well-being. It's time we allow the head of this church, Jesus Christ, to lead us to that place of victory where we can spoil the spoiler and recover what has been taken from us. Yes, yes. Trenton, Jenny, Lonnie, Jose, the God of peace is crushing Satan under your feet shortly. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Virginia, Tristane, Catherine, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly, shortly. Debbie, Erica, Hope, Michelle, Lynn, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. And you remember the law of the thief. When a thief was caught in the Old Testament, he had to restore not only what he took, but he had to restore fivefold. It's a number of grace. Grace has a blessing in store for you. This is my prayer morning devotion. But you get it back fivefold. 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 He never promised it was going to be easy. He never promised a bed of roses. He never promised us that we were going to make it to heaven coasting. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a fight. But you're going to get there. And you're going to get there restored because we're moving into a season of restoration. Can I close with this? She's one of my favorite, one of my favorite modern authors. She teaches locally at the University of Houston. You know you're from Houston when you say the University of Houston. You don't say University of Houston like all other normal people do. Yeah. Her TED Talks, she's a popular author, best-selling books. Brene Brown is her name. Brene Brown is probably an expert on emotional intelligence, health, well-being. But those lessons don't come easy. I remember an interview she gave about seven, eight years ago. She described how life had just broken down. And she had experienced a breakdown at midlife. She had read other people's stories of what she called the midlife unraveling. And she noticed a common theme. Many of them went back to church as their life began to unravel. So at midlife, she went back to church. She had been wrestling with what could have been, what might have been, what should have been. And and, uh, she said, I decided to go back to church. But going back to church is not what she thought it would be. She said, let me quote her. I went back to church thinking that it would be like an epidural, like it would take the pain away, like I would just replace my research with church. You know, the church would make the pain go away. But then she said, but then I discovered that faith and church was not like an epidural at all. It was like a midwife who just stood next to me and said, push, it's supposed to hurt. Yeah, it's supposed to hurt. I'm not, I'm not here today to give you a dose of anesthesia to make the pain go away. I am here today to say, 
loss hurts. It's supposed to hurt. Grief hurts. Sorrow hurts. Yeah. And you wouldn't be human if it didn't hurt. There's not enough anesthesia in the world, Tammy, Patty. Not enough anesthesia in the world to make the pain of loss go away or to simply get a stiff upper lip and somehow accept your loss. Ultimately, here's our hope. And what a hope we have. Our hope is not just the pain will go away. Our hope is restoration, that there's coming a season. And folks, this is, this is, these words have been on my heart for days and days and days. I had a pastor friend of mine said, you know, you said these words and it just electrified my heart. Here, here's the word, it's time. It's time. It's time to get it all back. It's time. When you get it all back, you're going to get understanding and you're going to understand that that law served a higher goal. There was a pruning to make you more fruitful. There was a revealing to help you see yourself. There was an enlightening to see God and to see your life in a different way. And there was an equipping to prepare you for the days ahead. But one day, restoration. It won't always be this way. Nazia, it's not always going to be this way. Kimmy, Yolanda, it's not always going to be this way. You're getting it back. You're coming back. We are entering into a season of restoration. Would you do me a favor? First, share this with someone who's lost somebody, lost something, who's struggling. But second, would you do this? Would you begin to claim that season of restoration in your own life and say, this is my season. This is my time. I'm getting it all back. Oh, praise God. God bless you. Thank you for encouraging one another. And thank you for being with us through this time and being a part of morning devotion. Share this with others. God bless you. Let's go get it all back in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to Morning Devotion with Ken Gurley. Join us next time for another inspiring devotion. To support this ministry, please visit firstchurch.com forward slash give.